By the end of 2015, uh, BBC approached us because of our knowledge in sprawling posture robots like the salamander robot and uh, they want to make a documentary of uh, wildlife in Uganda so they want a crocodile robot. And uh, the idea is to create a robot of 1 meter 20. Basically, the project started in 2016, January, and by February, March, we have the project finished. So we now to send this thing to London because they were making the skin. So basically, we create a crocodile skeleton, as you can see here. And in London, a special FX uh, studio, they create the skin to make it really, really look like a real crocodile. Well, this, this was one of the tests of the painting in the, of, the, of the skin that the BBC made for the crocodile. So it's a latex skin and it was painted exactly as the, real, as the real animal. We were in charge here in the laboratory of creating the mechanics and of course the software that controls the, the robot motion. We, we have here these dongles to connect with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. This is the hard drive basically, so all the information is here in this little memory and uh, this is a mini computer that allows us to connect with all the motors and control the communication with the motors and also control the communication with the external controller. So one of the main challenges that we have was uh, actually to find very good information of how the crocodiles move. So we observe a lot of videos and we have some uh, literature reviews that can give us some information but one of the main challenges was to find exactly how the locomotion of the crocodile is in order to port it. To the, to the robot. That was one of the challenges. A second big challenge that we have was that we are very used to work with the crocodiles here in the laboratory, where the temperature is very nice, where the ground is flat, but as we were there in the field, it was really, really hot, 38 degrees, and inside the latex skin of the crocodile, it was like 70 degrees. So the motors were chewed down all the time, the battery were not lasting too much. So we, we faced really big challenges on the field because we, there was the first time that actually we took one of the robots there. So we need to make it a little bit more robust to be able to put it on the field and that it survives. We also make it lighter because we need to span a little bit the amount of battery that we're going to use. So we, we need to make it last even longer than the current robots that we have. Um, we use a remote controller that is connected through either Wi-Fi or Bluetooth and also radio frequency. So we can connect the robot directly to this uh, remote controller and we can, with a joystick, basically it's like a video game, you can control the motion of the... With the Bluetooth you cannot go further than 10, 10 meters and that's very convenient if you're getting, clo getting close. But as we were going to Uganda to be close to real animals, we need to really be far away because we don't want to be risk at risk with these uh, big, huge animals. So we have this radio frequency system, so we they allow us to connect 500 meters away. And uh, how did you react when you saw the results? Sometimes, as creator of the robots, you are very critical in how they move. But so, then, when we were actually watching the TV series, you can't believe this is your robot. You actually see, and this, let's say, cinematographic magic that, that these professional people put in filming uh, makes you see from a different angle this. I was actually uh, astonished by this result. And, uh, of course, this is not just stopping here. This go further because we have another uh, research here in the lab, which is search and rescue. So this is very good because with this platform and with everything that we learn in the field with this platform, we can improve our robots to then go, for example, to disaster missions. Because we believe that these kind of robots, as they can walk on rugged terrains and also they, they can swim if you have a proper suit or proper waterproofing system uh, and they are amphibious so basically the morphology and the way they and in this case the crocodiles move they allow us to walk and swim so these amphibious capabilities are very good for these disaster response scenarios imagine for example that a building is collapsed and there is water inside the rubble and all this so it's very difficult for a human rescuer to go in this rubble and maybe all these debris and all these say, pancake structures but a robot like this can really go there and if it encounters water it doesn't matter it can swim also but I didn't do this thing myself 
my student Tomislav Horvat, he was in charge of all the programming and all the software and also part of the electronics of this. I was in charge of the mechanical design and of course the conception of the whole uh, project. And we work under supervision of Professor Auke Expert in the Biorobotics Laboratory in EPFL, Switzerland.